Hi guys, it's Doc Curry, and I just wanted to take a minute to address some concerns, confusions, and questions that I've seen in the comments over the past few days. Uh, the first thing I want to address is, you know, I've made a lot of predictions on both the market and individual stocks, and some of those have been right, some of those have been wrong. And some people, uh, you know, they, they just ignore all the ones that are right, and they just want to focus on that one that's wrong. And what I just want to say about that is this. If I was right on every single prediction, you should be seriously concerned. Like, I'd be some kind of like alien or something, right? Like, come on. You know, the fact that I'm wrong sometimes makes me a human being. Uh, you too, right? You're wrong sometimes makes you a human being. So uh, that's the first thing I want to say is obviously nobody's going to get right all the time. because You don't know what kind of news is going to pop up and you can never ever predict day-to-day -day market movement. You can predict tw trends, right? You can see the trends, um, but, but you don't know what's going to happen day-to-day. -day. And so that's the second thing I want to talk about is the trends. So if I look at the charts and I'm like, you know, technically we should be trending up or we should be trending down. It doesn't mean that the stock's literally going to go up every single day, right? I mean, think about it. If I think the market's going to trend up for the next three months, you really think we're going to get 90 days in a row of green candles? Like, come on. So, you know, the markets might be down one day, might be down one week. But overall, I think they're going to trend up. And then the third thing that I want to point out is this. Uh, when you look at what happened in the markets today, Granted, I didn't think the NASDAQ was going to drop as much as it did. That was a little shocking, but it wasn't entirely surprising. And here's why. You look at the NASDAQ, which is down 2.5%. And what is the NASDAQ full of? It's full of a lot of technology companies. It's full of a lot of growth stocks. It's really full of stocks that are not going to perform that well during a time of high interest rate and high inflation. Those are the kinds of stocks that are going to uh, end up losing profits because their money is going to go towards their debt uh, because the interest rates are going to go up. It uh, costs more money to borrow. And so this really be is, is a problem for these growth stocks. And the NASDAQ is chock full of growth stocks. So it would make sense that of the three indices, the three main ones, forget the Russell for a second, but of the three main industries, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ, that the NASDAQ would be the worst performing uh, while interest rates start to rise. Uh, the second thing is let's look at the S&P. And the S&P is a good mix, right? It's mostly large cap and mid cap. There's not a whole lot of small caps in the S&P. Uh, but it's a much better mix than the NASDAQ is. And it was down less than 1%. And then we look at the Dow Jones. And what is the Dow Jones full of? It is chock full of boomer blue chip large cap stocks. That's like all there is in it is large cap blue chip stocks. And if you recall from yesterday, I said, I think the large cap blue chip companies, the boomer stocks, are the ones that are going to perform the best. So it is no surprise at all that the Dow Jones was by far the best performing indice on Thursday. And so I really think that's what we're going to kind of see over the next few months is the Dow Jones is probably going to be the best performer, the S&P second, and the Nasdaq's probably going to lag behind. So um, it was a little shocking just how much the Nasdaq went down today, but it actually wasn't super shocking to see the Dow Jones be the best performing index of the day. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's kind of how you got to look at it. Uh, if your portfolio is down a lot, go look at what stocks are in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Or if, if you just want to, you could buy DIA, which is a Dow Jones ETF, and that'll get you uh, coverage on the Dow Jones stocks without having to go through and handpick them. So uh, that's one thing you can kind of look at if you want to, uh, you know, diversify your portfolio a little bit and kind of gather some of those large cap stocks without having to go hand pick them. So DIA, that's the Dow Jones ETF. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about is some people ask questions on what does uh, tapering mean uh, if, if they're going to, uh, if they're increasing their tapering, what exactly does that mean? So what happens is the Fed has the ability by law to go buy bonds. And when the Fed buys bonds, there's an inverse relationship in the bond market where when bond prices go higher, the yields go down. And so when the Fed is buying bonds, it keeps interest rates low. 
When the Fed does what's called tapering, it means they're going to buy less and less bonds each month. So in uh, December, they bought uh, $90 billion worth of bonds. In January, they're going to do 60. And in February, they're going to do 30. So that's called tapering because they're slowing down how, how much bonds they're buying each month. And uh, when we say they're increasing tapering, they were going to go down by uh, a factor of 15 billion each month. So they're going to go from like 90 to what's the next one? 75 down to 60 and then 45, 30, 15, zero. And then they increased tapering, which means instead of going down by 15 each month, they went down by 30 each month. So they're going to go from 90 to 60 to 30 to zero. So what that does is it, means they're going to buy bonds, uh, less bonds at a faster pace, which in turn, ultimately what it really means is interest rates go up faster. And that's really what you need to know. So how does that affect the stock market? That was the other question people had. And the reason this will affect the stock market, it's the exact same effect as raising interest rates. So any stocks that have debt, any debt are going to be affected by this. Uh, because as these companies issue debt, they're going to have to pay more interest on their debt. So it becomes more costly. That in turn is going to eat into profits. And that also in turn is going to slow down growth. And so that's how it affects the stock market. Now, if you are invested in stocks that don't have any debt, if they have zero debt, like the uh, company that I talked about Thursday afternoon. Uh, if you missed that video, go watch the video. It's a penny stock. It's a zero debt company with uh, billions of dollars in, in the bank. They are, are a million dollars in the bank. They're sitting good, right? So that's the kind of companies you want to be invested in. And Goldman Sachs came out a few uh, last month, I think it was, and they said the stocks that are going to perform best in 2022 are going to be high growth stocks with zero debt. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these high growth stocks with zero debt. And the stock I mentioned yesterday, yes, I know it was a sponsored video, but I didn't pick it willy nilly. You guys know I turned down over a hundred different uh, requests for sponsored videos before I picked that one. So seriously, I really, really, really take a lot of time to think about these and really think through what's gonna do well. And it's the stocks that are high growth with zero debt that are gonna do well. So look through your portfolio in Weeble. You can go to the finance section. You can go to the uh, uh, balance sheet tab and then scroll down. You're going to see a long-term debt and you're going to see short-term debt. Make sure both of those are zero. If they are, you're good. That stock should perform well. If the company has debt, that stock is probably going to suffer and have some difficulties. And then, like I said, uh, a lot of investors aren't going to want to go through and handpick all of those. So they're just going to go with the large caps because they've been around for decades and they got plenty of cash and they can, they've weathered bear markets before. They can weather the next one. And so uh, that's kind of what we're looking at right now. So just in summary, real fast, uh, tapering in the bond markets means higher interest rates. Higher interest rates means companies that have debt are going to suffer profits and suffer growth, which means... Those companies that are holding debt are going to go down in value. Those companies which have no debt are going to go up in value. And large caps are also going to go up in value because they've been around for decades. They've weathered storms like this before. And people are very confident that they'll weather storms again. Now, all of that said, once the actual interest rates start to be raised, and again, the Fed is thinking about doing three of these next year, probably starting in March, April, May, June, somewhere around there for the first one, my guess is... Uh, February, March. So my guess is April will be the first interest rate rise because uh, that'll be the next Fed meeting. So I think April will be the first interest rate rise. And if that happens, uh, then what happens is we, we'll get a reversal. So as interest rates start to rise, that's going to make the bonds more attractive because people will want to get more interest out of their bonds. That in turn will cause money to get pulled out of the stock market and put into the bond market. So once the actual interest rates start to rise, starting in April, I think, that is when we're going to see stocks overall start to go down. But until then, I think we see stocks continue to go up because that is the best place to put money right now uh, to try to beat this really, really high inflation that we're in.
So I hope that clarified a lot of things. Now I know you guys have some questions on some individual stocks. There have been requests for uh, NIO. There have been a request for an update on uh, TAAT, TAT, which was a sponsored video I did. And there's a request for an update on HLLPF, which was a sponsored video I did. Uh, one thing I do want to clarify real fast is that yes, I continue to hold all three of the stocks that I bought for the sponsored videos. I have not sold a single share. I am down just like you guys are down. I said in those videos, I believe in them long term and I mean it. I believe in them long term. Long term is not one month. Long term is not six months. Long term is like three to five years. So, you know, when, when I say a stock is long term, you've got to like come back in a year. Let's go look at this in a year and see how it's doing, right? Not a month later or three months later. Come on. So you know, long term means a year or longer. Most of these stocks, I'm looking 2024, 2025. You've got to give your long term stocks time. You've got to. Um, and that's, by the way, one more thing. I wasn't going to say this, but I'm just going to address it real fast. German with financial education is a really smart investor. I want you to Google German with financial education and Google, uh, Google like has he lost his touch. And what you're going to find is a Reddit article from 2018, three years ago, where his uh, public portfolio was sitting at about... Uh, what was it like $300,000 at the time? And people were asking, has he lost his touch? Do you know that his public portfolio today just hit, uh, about a month ago, hit $2 million? So this is what Jeremy does. This is how he makes so much money. He buys the dips. He finds these stocks that are beat down and he buys them. Now, granted, Jeremy doesn't do technical analysis. He does not understand technical analysis. He is purely a fundamental investor. So yes, he's going to buy dips. He's going to buy falling knives. He's just going to keep dollar cost averaging in. But you know what's going to happen? A year from now, two years from now, those stocks are going to turn around and he is going to make a killing. And I guarantee you two years from now, when his public portfolio is at $4 million, nobody is going to be questioning if he lost his touch. You, you know, it's just one of those things. So Jeremy is a prime example of buying the dip, buying low, and then selling high. He's going to sell his Tesla in January. He's going to sell high. He buys low because he's buying all these falling knives right now. So you'll just look at Jeremy as an example of how to invest. I'm not talking about trading. I want to be clear. We're not talking about trading here. Look at Jeremy as an example of how to invest. You buy low, years later, sell high. All right. That's what I wanted to say. I will give an update for you guys on uh, TAT, NEO, and uh, Hello Pal uh, sometime later this week. I'm going to do a dedicated video on, uh, well, I'll do a dedicated video on TAT and Hello Pal. I'll combine them together, do one dedicated video to give you an update on those. Like I said, I'm still holding. I have not gotten rid of those and I will not be getting rid of those for years to come. All right, I hope this video helped you guys out, helped you uh, understand a few things, uh, clarify things. Any other questions you guys have, put it down in the comments below. I will do my best to get another video out, just kind of going through and answering whatever questions you guys have. I want to encourage you guys to stay the course. We are about to make a lot of money. Buying the dips is hard because we're in a very, very volatile market right now. And we are seeing massive swings of more than 1% every day. Uh, but just stay the course. Find the stocks that you really believe in, that you know are undervalued. Uh, stocks like NEO, uh, Palantir, uh, anything that's really, really undervalued like that, just buy it up and hold it. It will go back up. All right, guys, I hope you have a lot of success trading. I'll be back with you Monday. Uh, please put whatever questions, comments, or concerns you have down in the comment section below, and I will address them in Monday's video. Have a wonderful weekend, guys, and we'll see you in a few days.